Good evening. My name is Reverend Caroline Steinemann Unzaga, and I'm the interim pastor at Wyoming Presbyterian Church. I'd like to welcome you to our Monday Thursday worship service that we are uploading on YouTube. You'll notice that we're not in the sanctuary and we're not in Fellowship Hall either, where in years past Wyoming Church has celebrated Monday Thursday. Tonight, I'm broadcasting from my home to yours. And I hope that we will be able to enjoy together the table fellowship that Jesus first enjoyed with his disciples, even though we can't be physically together. I'd like to invite all of you as we enter into this worship space to first light a candle. And as you light the candle, center your hearts and minds around the purpose of tonight. That is that tonight is the night in which Jesus, the Paschal Lamb, the Lamb who surrendered his life for all of us, turned himself over so that we, friends, could be liberated from sin and from death. Tonight, Jesus, the bread of life, sat with his friends, the disciples, and he offered them a way of living that was to love one another the way that he first loved us. Let us pray. Holy God and source of all love, we gather together tonight and we center ourselves on Jesus' mission of love and peace and joy. We pray that tonight that you would enter into this space and that you would remind us of that first commandment, that greatest commandment that Jesus taught his disciples. That we would still carry out that commandment of love in our lives and that it would propel us to serve others as well. We pray these things in the very holy name of Jesus Christ, amen. Friends, let's continue with our worship by singing our first hymn. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. 
Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around them. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. You will never wash my feet. Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, Jesus said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Well, last time we were together, we were celebrating Palm Sunday. Just a few days ago, we were on the road with Jesus with a big crowd. Folks who came seeking out a savior and grabbed branches and their cloaks and they put them on the ground and they led Jesus into Jerusalem in the week of Passover with shouts of Hosanna, save us. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Where we find Jesus and his disciples tonight is in a very different venue. It's a very different scenario. It's much more intimate. Where we find Jesus is dining with his disciples during the Passover Seder. Now, if you've ever been to Passover Seder, then you know that this is an occasion where Jews get together, not big crowds, but the closest friends and family gather in homes and they tell the story of the Passover and the Exodus, which is central to their identity as Jews. We do a similar thing as Christians on Monday, Thursday, we gather together, we celebrate the Lord's Supper and we hear this greatest commandment, the essential commandment to love one another as Jesus first loved us. Now this year, we've had an interesting turn of events to say the least. I think that's the nicest way that we could possibly put it. With a global pandemic, we have been wondering how exactly we would gather together virtually and how do we celebrate the Lord's Supper without feeding each other. And so we've worked out a, a virtual way of doing it. But I think about this situation that we're in, a situation in which we're in lockdown, which we're sheltering in place, and we're with the people who are absolutely closest to us. And maybe that rings true for this particular celebration of the Seder. Now, if you're like me, you know that sometimes family dinners, while intimate, can also have interesting family dynamics. And so I know that personally, I'm glad that some of my family dinners have not been written down and put into the annals of history. I'm glad that those family dinners have not been put into the canon of the Bible because there are dynamics that come into place, dysfunctional dynamics that make it hard. 
we as people are broken and it's hard sometimes to actually get along. And so we see that playing out with the Last Supper of Jesus. And what sticks out to me is that what we read in John is that Jesus loved them to the end. And so in his Last Supper with them, knowing that all the dysfunctional dynamics were in play, that Judas would, den would betray him, that Peter would deny him, that the disciples had jockeyed for the position of most favored disciple. There had been some sibling rivalry there. He knew all those things. He even might have known that they were going to fall asleep in the garden. And yet he loved them until the end. This year that really gives me a lot of solace and I hope that it gives you a lot of solace as well. As a society, we are operating in an extremely stressful situation. And stressful situations bring out the best in people, absolutely. And they also bring out the worst in people. And what we see in this stressful situation with Jesus as he comes in and he had been predicting his death. He had been predicting that he would be murdered. And coming into this Passover meal with the different dynamics in play, Jesus still loved them to the end. This year in Lent, we started out with the short stories by Jesus. And the first one we looked at was the parable of the yeast. And what it actually could be is the parable of the baker. And the parable of the baker, it's, it's not an, a metaphor or an allegory that we hear a lot to describe God, but we looked at it and saw how incredible it is. That God is like a baker who hides the yeast under the flour and miraculously produces much more bread than anyone would ever expect. We thought about that in terms of God feeding the entire kingdom, that there's enough bread for absolutely everyone and everyone is invited into this large open concept kitchen. We're all invited to sit down around the table, to break bread together, and we are all offered the daily bread that we so desperately need. In this moment, in this time, friends, we are wondering about our daily bread and we receive that assurance as we sit down around this table, we receive the assurance from Jesus that he loves us to the end, that he provides our daily bread, that he is the bread of life, and that he will do anything to show his love. As we gather around this table, may that promise that Christ is with us no matter what, and that Christ loves us to the end. Be present with all of you as you take the bread and the blood of Christ. Amen. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the boys I hear falling on my ear The Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me i am his own and the joy we share 
as we tarry there, none other has ever known. He speaks, and the sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their singing, and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me be falling, but he bids me go through the voice of woe, his voice to me is calling. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tell we there, none other has ever known. And the joy we share as we tell we there, none other has ever we've come to that time in our service in which we gather around the table and this is a little unusual for us this is the first time that we're not gathering together around the same table you're gathering around your dining room table and I'm gathering around mine but it is our belief that in the Christian community when we do so that our hearts will be joined with Christ in fact we are a community that is rooted in Christ. Christ is also here with us in this space. Let us pray. God, we lift up our hearts to you and we give thanks to you, our Lord, our creator, our redeemer. You made us in your image and you freed us from the bonds of slavery and we give thanks to you because you claimed us as your people and you made a covenant with us that you would be our God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and you brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey. When we forgot your covenant, you spoke through prophet, prophets calling us to turn away to your ways. Therefore, we praise you. We join our voices together. We join our hearts and minds and we center on the fact that you are holy, O God, O majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. In humility, he descends from your heights to kneel in obedience to love's commands. He who is boundless takes on the bondage of our sin. He who is free takes our place in death's prison. He who is risen leads us to eternal life. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us, and we celebrate the joy and the redemption that Jesus Christ won for us. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O holy and living God, that our lives might proclaim the one crucified and risen. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless 
may be the communion of the body and the blood of Christ. By your spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place, no matter where we are. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Lead us, O oh God, by the power of your spirit to live as love commands. Bound to Christ, set us free for joyful obedience and glad service. As Jesus gave his life for ours, help us to live our lives for others with humility and persistent courage. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection, when the redeemed of all ages will feast with you at your table, your banquet of glory. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God. And it is our privilege at this time to join our voices together, no matter where we might be. And to pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, the story that is at the heart of our faith is that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus was sitting with his friends, the disciples, and he taught them love by taking the bread and blessing it and breaking it and saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In like manner, he took the cup after supper and he said, This cup is the new covenant by my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Every time that you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. So that, friends, every time that we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. And come again he shall. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. Now we're going to be doing communion a little bit differently tonight. Normally we would be serving you with the nice silver or you would be coming forward and taking through intinction. But tonight we're doing something that we've never done before, which is I will be holding up the bread and holding up the juice and each time that I do that, I will take and you all will take as well. And we will be feasting together in this strange virtual way. Please join me in doing so. Friends, this is the bread of life. Friends, this is the cup of salvation. Let us pray. God of grace, we give you thanks for the feast of redemption we have shared in the body and the blood of our Savior. As you have nourished us with love, let our lives proclaim your great love for the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Friends, as we close this service, we're going to do so by reading Psalm 88. And as I do so, meditate on its words. And as we end the psalm, the service will conclude and you are free to end the service silently and meditatively. Here are these words from scripture from the psalmist. O Lord God of my salvation, when at night I cry out in your presence, let me let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry. For my soul is full of troubles and my life draws near to Sheol. I'm counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like those who have no help, like those forsaken among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, like those whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have put me in the depths of the pit, in the regions dark and deep. Your wrath lies heavy upon me, and you overwhelm me with all your waves. You have caused my companions to shun me. You have made me a thing of horror to them. I am shut in so that I cannot escape. My eye grows dim through sorrow. Every day I call on you, O Lord. I spread out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Do the shades rise up to praise you? Is your steadfast love declared in the grave or your faithfulness in Abaddon? Are your wonders known in the darkness or your saving help in the land of forgetfulness? But, O oh Lord, I cry out to you. In the morning, my prayer comes before you, O oh Lord, why do you cast me off? Why do you hide your face from me? Wretched and close to death from my youth up, I suffer your terrors. I am desperate. Your wrath has swept over me. Your dread assaults destroy me. They surround me like flood all day long. From all sides, they close in on me. You have caused my friend and my neighbor to shun me. My, companion, my companions are in darkness. This is the word of the Lord.